Hello and welcome back to our RTS tutorial series. In this episode we're going to take the resources that we've been collecting and then make it usable in our build menus. So at the moment our build menus look like this. We can place the building down, click on here and we've got these building UI cards. And these have requirements for how much wood and stone they need. At the moment this is not doing a check to see which uh, ones can be built. So we're going to add that functionality in today. So to get started, we're going to go to the UI and we're going to look at the UI cards in particular. These UI cards are generated with the information from the building class that's associated to them. And we're using the wood cast and stone cast to print to the stri uh, these uh, strings, these texts here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these wood cast and stone cast to do a limit check to see if we actually have those values. So on the construct event, What we're going to do is do a check, and that check's going to come from our class defaults. So I'm going to copy this and paste this down here. And on the construct event here, we're going to ch check what the wood cost is here and compare it to our game modes wood and stone inventory. So let's get the game mode, and then from here. Going to cast to our RTS game mode. We'll plug in, uh, or we'll plug in in a moment anyway. And as RTS game mode, we can now get the wood inventory, and we can also get the stone inventory. And that's how many of each we've got. Now we're going to check this against the stone cost and wood cost of the card. So first of all. Wood inventory, we're going to check if this is greater than or equal to the wood cost. And then the stone inventory, greater than or equal to the stone cost. These have to be both be true in order for it to be available. So we're going to take this out and do an and. Let's make sure that both conditions have to be true in order to get an overall true result. This will be used to determine whether or not the card is available or not. So make a new variable and call it is available. And this is going to be a boolean. We'll drag this out and then choose set. Plugging it into our AND here. We're then going to plug our construct event into our cast, and then we're done. So this is just setting a boolean. It's not actually going to tell us to lock it off or anything like that. So we're going to add that now to our click event. So on our click event, we're going to first of all check before we do the call here, a branch to check that is available. That will go in before our call. That way when we click on it, it does the check. And if it is available, it will do the call, allowing it to build. So the next thing we're going to do on here is we'll make it so it changes its appearance when it is available is true or false. We're going to go back to our construct event. And on the end here, we're going to do a branch here. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click and type in opacity. And you'll see set render opacity. In fact, we don't even need a branch. We can get rid of the branch for this. Let's plug that straight into there. And instead of using a branch, we can use a select node. So if in opacity, we're going to go select float and plug in our is available into the pick A. This means that when it's true, it will choose the A value. And when it's false, it will choose the B value. So if it's true, we want it to be Capacity of 1. And when it's false, we won't make it an opacity of 0 0.5. So when it's not available, it comes to a ghost image view of it. But let's test if that works. 
and there you can see they are not available for us to click on and you can see how they are see through that's excellent so what we're going to do now is we make it so that when we do build a building with it we need to take the cost away from the game mode so for that that's going to go onto the building class just go back to our building into our units for this we can go to the unit building base and we should have on the right hand side our wood cost and stone cost coming from the parent class of unit base we're going to use that when we place the object so here we have the place building and when this is completed we're going to get the game mode and then cast to our game mode RTS game mode look that up on our game mode we already have a function to handle this for us it's called the add resource now you may, may be thinking why are we using add resource when we've got um, to take away resources well what we're going to do for this one we're going to get the wood cost of the unit and then we'll multiply this by minus one and what that'll do is it'll make it a negative version of itself so if wood cost is five this will output as minus five if we plug in here it's going to add it onto it now when you add on a minus number it's actually going to take it away so that will handle that and because it's already set up for us from the previous episodes it will actually update the UI for us as well so we just need to do that again for the stone cost as well add resource this time we change the drop down to stone and this will be get stone cost multiplied by minus one We'll plug that into the number here. And there you go. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to my unit capital building, and I'm going to change the default values of this to be stone cost, wood cost, to zero, zero, and cost zero. Compile and close that. So then when I place this first building, we don't see nothing. Be taken away so now if i take my workers here and direct them to this tree i'll go over collect some wood and now return it to the, the base and i'm going to direct them to the stone as well now Okay, now I should go back to base with that stone. We should have enough to start building something. There you go. I can now build any of these items. I click on the farm here, build the farm. On this, see now everything's grayed out here. And over here, everything's grayed out here too. Perfect. And that is how we get the resources taken away and spent on our units now on the next episode we're going to start building our army up a bit more adding some more animations to them making them feel a bit more alive adding more units and so forth so join us on the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where you can watch all my videos before anyone else from just one dollar a month thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support it really is amazing i can't thank you enough Thanks again for watching, make sure you're subscribed and hit that like button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.